Hello again, everyone. In this video, we're going to take a look at the uh, Oracle WebLogic server. We're going to look at the architecture of the WebLogic server. It's pretty substantially different than the old Oracle application server. So if you're used to that, it's going to take a little bit of uh, learning of new terminology and uh, how the WebLogic server is set up. My motivation for creating this video was just to give like a 50,000 foot overview of how the WebLogic server is architected so that it can make a little more sense when you're looking at downloading and installing the software. So when we talk about architecture, we're just basically talking about how the software is organized on your system. And the first thing you're going to do, if you're interested in WebLogic, is you'll probably go to the Oracle download page and under under uh, downloads, you'll see they have this link here for Fusion Middleware 11G Release 1. And if you click on that, you have the ability to download the Oracle WebLogic server 11G Release 1, which, of course, still has the internal versioning of 10.3.5, just to make things complicated for you. But uh, the Web er, WebLogic server 11G Release 1 is available for you there. You can download that. And then you have all of these other things that you can download, like the SOA Suite is available here, the Service Bus. Uh, portal, a bunch of other things that you can download. But the first thing you're going to start with, obviously, is um, this WebLogic server. So what happens when you download and install the WebLogic server? Well, when you download and install the WebLogic server, you're going to create on your system. Let me just draw here. WebLogic server. When you download and install that guy, one of the first things it's going to ask you to do is, uh, after successful installation, is to create a domain. What's a domain? Well, a domain is just a cluster of WebLogic software pieces that are grouped together to make it logically easy for you to administer. So when you install the WebLogic server, uh, one of the first things it'll ask you to do is, do you want to create a base domain? And you can think of a, a domain as kind of a logical representation of a bunch of web logic server pieces that are just kind of clustered together. Every domain has to have something called an administration server. So it'll always have the admin server. That's part of your domain. You could have a simple domain that just has an admin server and nothing else. Wouldn't be terribly useful. I mean, the whole point of having a WebLogic server is that you want to serve up some kind of application, whether they're web based applications or SOA applications or things that use the service bus or stuff that uses, uh, you know, some of the legacy tools from Oracle like Portal or Forms or Reports or Discover or something like that. So you could have a domain that just has nothing more than an admin server, but again, it's not terribly useful. Where the power really comes in is when you start installing what are called managed servers. And a managed server is something that lives inside a domain that has, and like we said, every domain has to have uh, an admin server in there. And then you'll have some other server that makes up part of this domain that could be, let's say, the SOA server. Or it could be um, Oracle Service Bus. Or it could be a domain that has multiple managed servers put together. So you can think of uh, a domain, like I said, it's just kind of a way of grouping together a whole bunch of different software. So when you first install the WebLogic server, and if you create this base domain, all you're really creating, and I shouldn't have written all this stuff here, but all you're really creating is a simple domain that has an admin server. And it doesn't really do anything else. So in and of itself, it's not terribly useful. So then you go back to these download pages here in Oracle. Let me hop back here. And you can start downloading any of these managed servers that are available to you, like the SOA suite, uh, the service bus, uh, the data integrator and in suite is a managed server, uh, web center suite is a managed server, portal, there's another managed server out there called PFRD, and PFRD stands for Portal, Forms, Reports, and Discover. Those are the legacy tools that Oracle uh, has, and there's a, a managed server that goes along with the WebLogic server that has all of the functionality for you to deploy forms and reports and discover reports and everything like that. Uh, there's a whole business intelligence suite here. So you can see here's Business Intelligence Suite EE. Oracle has uh, named their new business intelligence products 
OBIE, Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. So this is a managed server that you can install into WebLogic also that gives you all of these really cool uh, data warehousing and business intelligence tools that are associated with it. So what happens when you download, let's take uh, the SOA suite as an example. So you download the SOA suite and uh, as part of the installation of the SOA suite it'll say okay do you want to create a new domain. So at this point if you've installed a WebLogic server, let's say you've done this first and you've created some base domain that, like I said, always has an administrative part, and that's really what you're getting from the WebLogic uh, server piece here, is the administration part that goes along with this domain. I download my managed server, and I go through the installation of that. Let's say, and again, I'm just picking SOA as an example. I now have two options. I can either create a new domain that has my SOA pieces in it, or I can go to an existing domain and say, I want to install that managed server in the existing domain. So I can do it either way, right? So I can either extend this base domain. You don't have to call it base domain. You can call it XYZ. You can call it anything you want. But just as an example, uh, I can extend this base domain and say, okay, now I've installed my managed server pieces and I want to install SOA into this guy. That's one option. The other option is to say I want to create a whole new domain. What happens when I create a new domain? Well, maybe I create this domain, this new domain called SOA domain. And again, you can call anything you want. Two things happen, right? As soon as I create the domain, Oracle takes the WebLogic server software and it takes the admin piece out of here and it clones it, right? So it's going to clone the admin pieces out of my WebLogic server software. And it's going to create this new SOA domain. And it's going to put the admin piece in here for me. So that's step one. And then step two is that it's going to create all of the SOA server pieces as part of this domain. And I have a brand new domain. So now I download some other managed server. So let's say I download uh, the Oracle service bus. right? Again, I have a couple of options. I can either extend the base domain and put my Oracle service bus into there. I can extend my SOA domain and put it into there. Or I can create a whole new domain and create a third domain as part of my installation, right? And what happens if I create a third domain? Well, again, the WebLogic server software, it's going to copy the necessary administration pieces out here. It's going to create a brand new OSB domain. It's going to put the admin server in there. And then it's going to put all the OSB software in there. I could do it here also if I wanted to. I could do it here if I wanted to. I have all these different options that are available to me. Depending on your needs, obviously, all of these different things make sense under different circumstances. There's no one right answer for any of these different things. One of the really nice things about WebLogic software is the ability for me to cluster managed servers together. So I might have this OSB server over here, let's say, and this is running on server one, and I have a completely different server over here, server two. Right? I can cluster these two guys. There's really no way, easy way to draw this. I can cluster these two guys together. Have one administration server, right? If I cluster it together, I don't need an admin server over here. I can cluster these two guys together on two completely different servers, and I can run my admin server uh, that's part of this. What does this give me, right? This gives me the ability to have high availability if the server crashes for whatever reason. I don't need the admin server running. I can just serve up what I need to here in the, uh, uh, from this Oracle service bus uh, server, managed server that's running on the server two over here. I can serve up all my um, requests that are coming through on this guy. Uh, I also have the ability, ability to do load balancing. I can set up a whole bunch of different parameters that say, OK, look at the load balancing and route some of my requests here to server one on this OSB, route some other requests to this server on this uh, one over here. This server crashes for whatever reason. All of the requests will be satisfied from server one. When the server comes back online, the administrative server says, oh, OK, I recognize that the second server is back online again. Recluster these guys together. Do all these different types of things. When I deploy applications, I can deploy them to uh, this uh, one server and they'll be replicated automatically to this other server. R really a lot of possibilities here. But this is really an overall view of what the architecture of the WebLogic server looks like. 
there's a tremendous amount of flexibility and again there's no one right answer to how you're going to set up your system everything really has to be dependent on what the needs are inside your organization you can have your entire web logic environment in one domain on one server right that's the simplest way of of executing this or you can have a really complicated setup where you have admin servers all over the place you have clustered servers all over the place you got web logic uh, domains that are broken up between all your different environments maybe you have multiple domains on one server you have a different cluster domain uh, on two other servers tremendous amount of flexibility and Oracle gives you a lot of really cool management tools that goes along with all of these different pieces so this video again just to give you the 50,000 foot view of uh, what WebLogic architecture looks like in the next couple of videos we're going to start drilling down into each one of these pieces and see all the really cool things that you can do uh, with the WebLogic server